Have you ever wanted to share a recording of your screen on your iPhone or your iPad in iOS 11? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can capture, record, and share a recording of your screen here in iOS. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete. This is Studio Live Today, where I help you create, record, and release your best music. And today, something a little bit left field, not directly music related, but I'll tell you as we go through how I use this for my music. And you can probably tell with GarageBand up here what I'm going to be talking about. But there are literally hundreds of uses for this. And one of the most handy ones is to actually share with other people what's happening on your screen. And that can help you problem solve and troubleshoot your own issues, or even share your tips, tricks, and tutorials with other people. In fact, I use this very method for my GarageBand Quick Jam series, where I show you how to do some quick things and use instruments in GarageBand in around two minutes. And you can, of course, check the link out above and below if you'd like to check out that series. But for now, let's jump in to the iPad and I'll show you how to set up, record your screen, and then share it with other people. Okay, so here we are in the iPad now. Let's get set up to do screen recording and the method is almost exactly the same in the iPhone. So if you're using an iPhone, no problem, just follow along with these steps. So we're firstly we're gonna tap on settings and then within settings, we're going to go to control center here. So if we scroll down to control center, which is right here at the top, just under notifications, we can then tap on customize controls. And in here, what we're actually changing is your swipe up menu. So when you swipe up like this, from the bottom here, you've got these options over here on the side, which you can actually choose. And by default, you've got things like the camera, alarm, rotation, all of that sort of thing. So if we go back to our settings now, the ones that we've got here that we can actually configure, we've got timer and camera on here. What we actually wanna do is down the bottom here, this screen recording option is what we wanna add. So all we need to do, whoops, we've just added a stopwatch by mistake. That's okay, we'll tap and remove. And now we'll go uh, add on screen recording. So that will put screen recording onto our control center so that anytime we swipe up now, it's going to go straight to our control center. So let's go back now and press our home button to go back to our main screen. So let's test this out now. If we swipe up the screen, we can see here that over on the right hand side of this may be in a different place depending how your screen's laid out. But there's this button here and when we tap that button, we get a three, two, one countdown and then it will turn red and it will start recording our screen. So if we go out of there now, you'll see we've got this red band across the top and that band will show up in the iPad. Depending on your version of the iPhone, it may not show up, but it may still be recording. If we wanna check if we're doing our recording, we just slide up and you can see we've got our flashing red light. To stop, we just tap on that and it'll say that our screen recording video is saved to our photos. So to view it, all we need to now do is tap our home button, go into our photos, and then go to our camera roll. And right down here, you can see we've got this one here. It's a 22 second video. And if we play that one back, it is going to play back our recording. So this record, this is actually the video recording of what we just did. So we can treat it like we do any other photo. We can scroll forward and back and we can even do some light editing in here. So if, uh, because one of the things you would have noticed is that we have, you'll always have that sort of three, two, one at the start there. So if we want to edit that, we can actually go in to the photo here and we can tap on edit in the top right here. And like any other photo or video in here, we can find a position here. So if we wanted to remove that opening part, we just find it to there. We grab this end until it turns yellow, which is a bit tricky to do with this setup. There we go. And then we can drag it across and find the point where we want the video to start. Say so there, let go, tap done. And then we can save this as a new clip. Depending on how much you're cutting out and how much space you have, it may say uh, trim the existing video or it may say save it as a new, new clip. Sometimes you'll get that option, sometimes you won't. So that is the quick and basic way. So if you're just after a way to capture the vision on your screen, and save it as a photo. And then of course you can share that photo through any of the sharing methods, oh sorry, that photo, that video, through any sharing methods that you usually use. You can tap it, you can select it, you can tap on share up here in the top left, 
and then you can email it, you can send it as message, iMessage, Facebook, whatever you wanna do, that's now just a standard video file that you can actually share here from your iPad or your iPhone. But wait, there's more. We can also record audio of our screen. So to show you this, I'm going to come in here to GarageBand. We'll open up a track here. Let's just go to a random spot here where I know there's a lot of audio, like so. Now we're gonna engage our screen recorder by sliding up, sliding up again. Don't worry that it's gonna scroll a bit. We're gonna tap on the record button, tap back onto GarageBand to get ready to go. Our red bar comes on telling us it's going to now screen record. We'll ha hit play. Yeah, but those days are gone, they have floated away. Now I'm moving on, no more yesterday. There it is, a recording of my new song called New Day, in case you're interested. So we've got that recording now, we, well we haven't, because we haven't stopped it. We'll slide, we'll slide up, we'll slide up again to get to our spot here. We're going to hit the record button again, it will stop. The iPad will tell us that the screen recording video is saved to the photos. We can now go back into our photos and we've got a new screen recording down here. So this time around when we play back, we're actually gonna hear the sound as well as get our vision of our screen. Let's have a listen. Yeah, but those days are gone, they have floated away. Now I'm moving on. So there you go, pretty cool, hey, a really good way to record not only the video and the vision on your screen here, but the audio as well. There is one limitation here, and if you're an audio person like me, this is gonna be a little bit frustrating, but the audio you get there is only mono. So it's going to push, uh, it's gonna mix it down to a mono signal and push the same signal to your left and your right channels, which is a little bit frustrating if you wanted to share something like a GarageBand project. There are ways around that using some editing, so you can export your project from GarageBand, you can export just a screen recording, put them together in iMovie, and then create one video file from that. And I've got a video that shows a similar sort of method, it doesn't show the screen recording, it just shows using a still photo, but you can use the same method to just grab the video file from here using screen recording, and then export using GarageBand, and you will be good to go. So that is a way that you can get a stereo file, but if you just wanna record a quick sort of demo and get an idea out there and to record it, again, a really cool way to just grab and go and record your screen with audio. But wait, there is even more. So I mentioned at the start of the video that I actually use this method to record my screen for my GarageBand Quick Jam videos. And the reason that I use this is that I can get not only the audio from the iPad or the iPhone, but I can actually record my own voiceover or commentary as I'm recording the screen, which is super handy. And to do that, instead of just tapping, we tap and hold on this record button. And then we get these additional options. And in fact, I've already had it on uh, when I've been recording these first few. So um, the microphone audio off means it's only gonna record the audio from the iPad or the iPhone. When we tap that on, it's now gonna record the iPhone or iPad audio directly out of there. And mine's coming out of this three and a half mil jack so that I can record it. And it's going to record my microphone audio as well. So if we wanted to do a tutorial video, it suddenly makes it really easy to do that. Let's do a quick demo of that now. We'll hit start recording. We'll tap back out here and tap on GarageBand. I'll say, here's how we do this particular thing in GarageBand. I'll press play. It will play my track. I'll press stop. I'll say some more things and then we'll slide up and we'll stop our recording. And now we can actually just tap this notification to go into our photos and show the video directly. Now let's play back this video and see if it has indeed recorded my speaking spoken voice as well as the audio of the track i'll say here's how we do this particular thing in garage band i'll press play it will play my track i'll press stop i'll say some more things and then we'll slide up and we'll stop our recording and there you go it has worked a treat we have our video ready to go there and ready to use with both my spoken voiceover audio as well as the audio from GarageBand, which makes it a really handy feature for sharing. However, one thing that we have to keep in mind here are a couple of things, in fact. So some final sort of tips and thoughts on this. One is that 
whenever you change out of one app to another, the screen recorder seems to have issues. So if you're in GarageBand and you're using a third-party plugin, or even if you're switching apps to something else, then you're going back to GarageBand, it does tend to cut out the audio, which is very frustrating and hopefully will be fixed in the future. The other thing is that the audio output, when you've got those two tracks, it does put it onto two different audio tracks, which means if you're doing things like editing in iMovie, it's only gonna bring in the audio track of your iPad or iPhone. It won't bring in that commentary audio. Now, the way around that, if you're doing editing, is to export the file. If you're editing on a Mac or a PC and using something like Premiere Pro, you can actually import into that uh, software with a little bit of editing and kajigging, um, which if you're interested in, let me know and we can do another video on that another day. But you can actually bring it in and separate out those two tracks. So there are a few sort of little niggly things around screen recording. It's still quite a new function. We've only had it for probably six or seven months at this stage, maybe a little longer, and it's still being worked out. Hopefully, maybe by the time you're watching this, all these kinks will be worked out and be working perfectly. But a couple of things to keep in mind about screen recording. So there you go, screen recording here in iOS. And as I mentioned before, the iPhone is almost exactly the same method as we use here on the iPad. Now, if you... So there you go, screen recording here in iOS. And as I mentioned before, if you're using an iPhone, the method is almost exactly the same. You can use these same steps, this same process to record your screen and audio on the iPhone as well. Now, before we finish up, a couple of quick tips slash warnings. Sometimes this is a bit flaky and I mentioned it in the tutorial that there are a few little quirks and bugs that they're still working out with screen recording. So sometimes you will just have it stop completely. Sometimes the audio will drop out part way through. It's kind of just part of a new feature here. So yes, it's super frustrating, especially if you're a long way through. My tip for that is if you are recording a really long video, maybe do it in chunks, do it in five, 10 minute chunks, and then check in to make sure it's actually working. You don't want to be half an hour into a giant tutorial and realize that your audio cut out at the three minute mark. That can be really, really frustrating. Anyway, if you've got comments, questions, or suggestions about screen recording or anything else, audio, video, or home studio related, then you can drop your comments and questions down below and I will see you on the next video. Thanks again for watching. If you'd like to subscribe, you can click on the subscribe icon over to your right. There's also two rectangles down below if you'd like to watch the more videos and you can head over to studiolivetoday.com for more audio related goodness. Cheers.